G'day, my name's Gordon Dedman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're going to go on a little shopping trip into the bush and see what we can find that's worth eating. So this is our spiny-headed mat rush, or Lamandra longifolia. And this is common throughout the east coast of Australia. You see it planted in parks and in, on medium strips. It's actually a very common uh, native uh, ground cover that's used. And in the, in the bush you find it growing prolifically along stream beds and re-entrance around um, uh, rain, in rainforests and also in, uh, heavily uh, in woodland. And it is a fantastic bush snack. The leaves, Aboriginal women use them to make baskets and, you can, and they can be made into string. There's many uses of those, but what we're interested in is the white leaf bases. Now these leaf bases, I've pulled these out of the ground and you need to be pulling out the central uh, growing area of the, of the tufts. Now there's many growing centres in each tuft. 
and what I'm after is this section here and I'm just going to peel those back I'm peeling off the um, I'm just going to put that down down for a bit I'm actually peeling off the fibrous outer sheath and the soft leaf bases here you can snack on them straight away and they taste just like raw peas. As soon as they become fibrous, you just discard those. Here, it's another bit in there which is nice, which I'm going to get in. You just need to get rid of the outer fibrous part. Mmm, that's a good bit. The other thing you can do is when you've got them like that, is cut them up into little bits and you can fry them up with onions and carrots, put a bit of sea salt and some pepper in and it tastes really really nice and you just cook them up like a leek. Lots of carbohydrate and that was a great, that's a great food snack and it was a staple food for, for many Aboriginal um, uh, groups and that's um, one of my favourite. That's a great bush snack and if you get enough of it, it's quite time consuming to collect, you can actually have um, quite a good meal out of it. Lots of carbohydrates and carbohydrates are important. There's another good one there, you could even cut that up or just eat as it is. Tastes just like raw peas. The seed heads, now it's past the due date, it's actually May now, but in spring, spiny-headed mat rush, aptly named, because these spines and the seeds, now they've all fallen off and you can't see it, but when in springtime you'll see you have big droops of, uh, of seeds. They're more edible when they're green, but you can make a flower out of them. They're just very, very hard when they're, um, when they're completely ripe, very hard. Even after ro when roasting them, they're still really hard. Then you can make it, ground them up and make a flower out of those as well. But um, those seeds, but the best time to eat them is when they're still green. You can't really see those at the moment because it's um, out of season for those. So that's like a supermarket plant. So that's spiny-headed mat rush or Lamandra longifolia. So here's another common plant that's found all around uh, the east coast of Australia and down to Victoria. It's, there's a few species, this is Garnia species or also known as saw sedge and it's aptly named because the leaf, the sides of the leaves are just like little saws and actually Aboriginal people used to and still do in some areas use that as a cutting implement and it's just like getting a very deep paper cut and different species of garnia have you know the, the teeth the teeth are, are, are bigger or smaller and give you a nastier cut so you need to be careful pulling these out because you can cut yourself the ones on this one aren't actually too bad um, but it's going against the leaf the leaves you have to be careful and you can feel that it's like a, a, a razor like a razor saw but the part we're interested in now they also have a seed head. Now the seed heads with the, the garnier, they're not in flower at the moment. They have produced um, very hard seeds and they're, quite, they're red when they're almost done. They turn black, but you'll see them as, as red droops. And once again, they're very, very hard. So you, even after roasting, but you'd ground those up into flour and, um, and, or, and you can make a damper out of those. But the part we're interested in at the moment is the leaf bases. A lot of the rushes, and the sedges, the leaf bases are edible. And what I'm going to do is pull the outside husk off that. And very similar to the Lamandra longifolia, we just get rid of the fibrous stuff. I'm going to get my knife out and just pull off that base. Now it depends, sometimes you'll get them in a, in a dry environment and you'll pull them out and they're going to be quite hard and woody but in a wet environment they're more and more succulent so it just depends not all plants are going to be the same it depends where they're growing and what what the habit is so i'm just going to cut that off there there are medicinal uses for this as well it's quite tough that and what i'm trying to do i might just get some rid of those parts there is it's just like onions it's like uh, rounds of onions and that's how we're going to use it and we can put this in with um, 
uh, stir fry with, and I often fry this up like onions with the Lamandra longifolia. I can eat that there. It's a little bland, it doesn't taste like onions. It tastes much better when you cook it up though. Now we're getting into the good stuff here. It just looks like onions. So very leek-like. And what we do, whoop, is we're just going to we could cook that up with our Lamandra longifolia, add some pepper, add some carrots, and you've got a nice little snack. So that's Garnia, Garnia Spurgeon, all sausage, of which there are a few different varieties. Okay, what we have here is the grass tree or Xanthorea species, of which there are a few different kinds depending where you are in Australia. And this is another supermarket plant. Now, it's very common, you probably recognise it from the big flower spikes, which they can grow up to two or three metres. I've collected these from the ground. Um, I didn't get the, uh, the tall thick ones, they grow thicker than this, but once they, they grow, they, they drop the old stems and they, they reshoot. And so I've collected these dead ones from the ground. And these dead ones were and still are used um, for friction fire lighting. And they are excellent. It's probably Australia's best friction firewood. And I use them all the time for bow drill or for hand drill, and when you get thicker ones, you can use them for, um, for bow drill, but they are fantastic. The flowering spike, um, those seeds in there, once again, they can be edible, and they can be broken, over, broken open um, and roasted and ground into a flower, and of course, adding water you create to make a damper. And so they can be used like that as well, and they're marvelous for that. The base of the trunk, also ex and it exudes a resin and that resin can be those I couldn't find any on the, the specimens today but in other parts particularly Western Australia it actually has a resin and that resin mixed with a little bit of once it's melted and mixed with a little bit of kangaroo dung and a little bit of charcoal to, do you act as a binding agent you can then make a glue and it works very well and it sets very very hard and we might look at that in another episode but that's some um, there's so many many uses but our use of that today are um, the, growing, the growing tips or leaf bases of a, an immature uh, plant, a very young one that's coming up. And that's why I selected, there was many, there was hundreds of them, and that's why I chose, I didn't take them off a big, a big specimen because that would kill the plant. And it's the same as collecting these spikes, you don't collect them from a plant because it will kill the plant. You wait until they shed them and they, and they fall to the ground, that's when you get the dead stems. And the same goes for the leaves because like Lamandra longifolia, I can snack on the end of those and at, right at the very tip, you can only get probably about a centimetre at the maximum from them, I can munch on those. And you've got quite a high water, I can suck the water out of it, a little bit sweet, which is nice. Right. Or I can just cut them up, it depends on the specimens, a clump, if you get a, a clump, you can get ones that are quite sucking and get a centimetre out, they all change. But that's a nice little snack. Or I can cut them up and add them to my little stir fry that we talked about before. The other use for these, there's many, many uses. I can get a whole stack of these, bind them up, and I frequently do this, and I actually make a whisk for cleaning my pots, so out in the bush. I just get another lot, make some cordage around that, get a thicker one, and then I've got a core, um, something a whisk to clean my uh, a pot cleaner with. There's quite a few uses, just it's a matter of improvising. So the grass, this is the, um, it's a very, it's a supermarket plant. So this is a grass tree or Xanthorea. Here's another common tree or species of trees found all over Australia, and that's the Banksia species, of which there are many different kinds. This one here is Banksia spinulosa. And it's a number of uses for all the Banksias. A lot of them are very similar, actually. And you may recognise this beautiful flower spike that the Banksias produce. 
and what we can do with that is it's just a little bit past its uh, use by date at the moment we're probably about two or three weeks too late it's May at the moment but uh, the nectar in this if you get up early enough and you get this this whole thing is filled with nectar and it's very very sweet and what you need to do is just if you've got a hot cup of water is simply just dip that into that hot cup of water and you get a nice sweet drink and it tastes really nice you can run your finger along it and you can just taste the nectar, the sweet nectar. Um, that was one of the, a major source of actually sweet nectar for Aboriginal people in the area. Um, um, as far as sweetness and, and uh, is concerned. And it's a great way to, to flavour your, uh, your water. It's very, very nice because sugar and sweetness is hard to come by out in the bush. The seed heads of pretty much most all Bank Banksia species, when uh, the, the, the spike dies is the seed heads left have seeds in them and, and basically what happens as the plant dies they open and then the seed capsules fall out. Now you'll find a lot of these where they're still closed and in order to open them you need to put them on the fire or near the fire and that heat will actually cause them to open. And a lot of the, the plants in Australia need fire to help them with germination. And that's how you get at the seed pods. There's other ways you can actually put them um, in the oven that'll actually help open the, the um, seeds or the actual the pods and get the seeds out. And once again, once you've got the seeds, you can roast them, ground them up, or you can actually just eat them because they actually come out and they're paper thin. And that, that's a, a, a great little, very, very high in protein uh, Banksia seeds. So that's the Banksia spinulosa. Another one I've got here is Banksia serrata and aptly named serrata because it has a serrated leaf. And you can see straight away if I compare it to Banksia spinulosa it's quite different. And it actually uh, when you see the, uh, the seeds, you can see they're much bigger seeds, so you get a, um, a seed pod, you get a much bigger seed coming out of that. There's a look at it. Now, it's actually got all these hairs over it before it gets to that stage, but once you get rid of those hairs, you're left with those seed pods. And there's actually a couple that are unopened there. So to get that to open, you'd need to have to put that near the fire and that fire will cause that to open. Then you can get that, that uh, it's almost like a triangle shaped seed out of that. And then you can roast them up and they're very high in protein. And they're bigger seeds than what this, the Banksia spinulosa are. And they taste, taste great. And you can combine these with, in, stir, put them in a stir fry with your Lamandra longa folia and your um, garnier. And you can actually have it, you've got some protein and you've got some um, carbohydrates as well and, and just fry them up as you would nuts. So that's Banksia serrata. There are many other uses um, for, for, for Banksia um, with the, uh, you can actually dead trunks, you can lift off the bark of that and they harbor grubs in, and the, the, a lot of edible grubs live in the bark of Banksia. But um, they're very common all over Australia. That's Banksia species. Here's another common tree found in many areas of Australia. It's the she-oak or casherina. And there are a few different um, varieties of this as well. A lot of people confuse it with a pine tree. It's not. It's, it's a casherina species. And the leaves, like dead leaves, are great for helping you starting fires. Not as tinder, just as early kindling. And this, the... Uh, the nuts or cones on this uh, also have seeds, very, very small uh, winged-like seeds in here. Now, very, very small, but you have to wait till these open. And there's a few different stages, and when you get the young green cones or brown, and they used to be chewed, Aboriginal people used to, and still do, chew those um, young green cones to um, help alleviate thirst. And a lot of the early settlers did exactly the same thing. They'd just munch on those. It sort of makes you, gives you a very dry, it actually activates the saliva. So if you've got a dry, a dry mouth, it activates the saliva glands and it, it actually puts the moisture in your mouth. But what our interest is, is the seeds. So the trick is to get them when they're, you can see that they've got quite a raised uh, triangular um, sort of a ribbed aspect to them 
and we want to get them at that stage and then we put those once again around the fire or you could put them in the oven and get the heat open those uh, those little pods and then the seeds fall out. Another way you can do it is put them in a brown paper bag and leave them for a couple of um, weeks in a, in a dry space and nature will do the work for you, they'll fall out. You have to get them at the right stage though, not the little ground brown ones um, when they're growing that's too early, it's almost when they're just about to open on their own, it's hard to pick. If they're like that, when they're already open you're too late, you've missed them. You need to collect quite a few and once again you can mix them with your Banksia seeds and mix them in your stir fry and once you've got, you've got a high protein content. Actually you can actually make, um, stick them for desserts and things like that as well. They're very small seeds but it's very easy to collect a lot if you put them in a brown bag. Um, there's a few out there, but it's, it's great uh, wood for making tools with and out in the wild, particularly in northern Australia, Casuarina species are a great water indicator because Casuarina species love lots of water. And we've got the, 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 the bush she oak, there's a few different, um, um, the forest oak, there's actually quite a few different varieties of them, but they all love water. So um, they, they were used by the first settlers, the early settlers, as a way of finding water because of the particular hue and colour of the leaves attracted the, the ships to the shore. They knew where you find those. Um, not too far away is going to be fresh water, but you probably have to dig for it. So that's the, um, the Casuarina. Here's another great bush snack. However, it's at the wrong time. These won't come into fruit for another um, two or three months yet. But what we're looking at is the Pisunia species. And there's, I've got a couple of different varieties here. In this hand, I've got the uh, Pisunia pinifolia because it has a pine, pine, pineate leaf, also known as pine leaf jibung. So Pisunia, the other common name is jibung. And this one here in my right hand is a broad leaf jibung or Pisunia levis. And they both have these seeds, as I said, this, they're way too early and they grow to probably four times the size of that. And they ripen on the tree and they turn a dark purple colour or a dark purple and, and they fall to the ground. You need to wait for them to fall to the ground before you can eat them. And you've got to get them before the, uh, the bandicoots and the birds because they love them as well. But they taste really nice, particularly the um, Pisunia pinifolia. That tastes really nice. It actually tastes a bit like stewed apples. It's quite nice. And it's one of my favorites, but it's, you've got to pick them up before the animals get them. I've tried to collect them and let them collect them earlier on the tree and let them ripen. For some reason, they don't like doing that indoors. You know, just, they seem to just ripen a lot better out, out, to, out in the wild. But um, they're, they're beautiful and they're found a lot over the east coast of Australia, as is the broadleaf jabung. And the, the broadleaf jabung also has a very paper, paper-like uh, trunk and it's um, quite easy to identify. But you can see very, very different leaf. And these are known when they're all hanging, they're known as they hang in droops. But it's a beautiful bush snack once they're in the right season. That's the um, jabung or Pisunia species. Okay, here's one of my favourite bush snacks. This is the native sarsaparilla or Smilax glycophilia. There is also Smilax australis. And there are a few parts of this. The young leaves of Smilax glycophilia or native sarsaparilla, if you get the young leaves and chew on them, Starts off a bit, it has a bitter taste, and then you get this very sweet sarsaparilla-like aftertaste. That one's quite strong, actually. Mm. And what the in colonial times they used to make a tea out of it. Used to crush them up, boiling water, and you can make a, a nice tasting sort of sarsaparilla sweet tea out of these. Now. That's nice. I often make a tea out of that out in the bush. They also have berries. Now I couldn't actually find a specimen with lots of berries and no doubt I'm going to have a wander around later and I'll, I'll come across them. But 
they produce a little black edible seed when it's ripe and they're very very high in vitamin C and they taste quite nice you can eat those you can eat the seeds on the Smilax Australis and they're actually found up in um, Northern Territory as well they have a much thicker vine very high in vitamin C but they've got quite a look this is a very once you get the outside you eat you're eating the outside flesh but they're high in vitamin C I couldn't actually tell you the exact vitamin C content so but some you usually get them in droops as well but that's a great bush snack so bush tea or you can make a concoction out of it or you can eat the berries and the, the very they're a very fine vine the um, Smilax glycophilia and that fine makes a nice very light string it's not that strong but the uh, Smilax australis has a much thicker woody stem it's, and that's actually got some thorns on it. You can actually use that for, um, I've used that for hand drills and making friction fire as well. But I couldn't find any of that to show you. But there are a couple of different sorts. But that's um, native sarsaparilla or Smilax glycophilia. Now I've saved this one to the last because I'm sure you all recognise what this is. And this is a, a choice treat of the forest. This is the pink flowered native raspberry or Rupus parvifolius and it is absolutely delightful. Like all raspberries once you take them off and you see them mm, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous. There are a few different medicinal um, uses of the leaves as in all these plants there are medicinal uses for many of them but we might look at those medicinal, use, medicinal uses in another episode. Uh, but that truly is a, a treat of the bush. Hmm, we'll have another one. You've got to be quick and get these before the birds do. They're actually in, they're fruiting at the moment, it's in May, so there's quite a lot of them about, so I love these as well. There are a few different species of uh, native raspberry in Australia. Um, this is um, one, of the, one of the best ones. So native pink flowered raspberry or Rupus parvifolius. Well I hope you've enjoyed our little shopping trip into the bush and our collection of bush snacks. There are many many more plants we could have found and had a look at and all of these plants have many medi medicinal uses as well so we've only just scraped the surface on, on, on what we've had a look at. If you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel. That helps with the visibility of the whole channel. We also have a blog page on our website, which is www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au. And we also have, um, you can subscribe to our Facebook page and also our Instagram page. If you'd like to do one of our Bushcraft Survival Australia courses, please go to our website and check out some of the courses that we have on offer. My name's Gordon Dedman and I look forward to seeing you again soon.